Valentine's Day Mackish package. That's at MacLessons.com. Do not forget to do that. Let me put on some Mackin music. Let me put on some old school Mackin music. But like I said, man, tonight is the last night to get the Valentine's Day Mackish package. You guys go to MacLessons.com to get that. Also, today's show is brought to you by DownLopez.com. That's D-O-W-N-L-O-P-A-Z. Dot com. DownLopez.com, that's a place where you can hear brutally honest reviews about the latest hip-hop mixtapes. You can hear music from up-and-coming rap artists. You can hear music from established artists. You can hear a lot of good, 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 fly-ass material. You can also read up on different articles every day talking about the rap game. They're going to be talking about why um, a lot of independent artists aren't getting on the radio. They have a lot of good game about the hip-hop industry on this website, downlopez.com. Um, also, you can buy their Best of Mixtape Review, Volume 1. It features many songs from some of the best talent that they've come across on the website. And real good site, downlopez.com. What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Download, back again for another mixtape review. Let me give a big shout out to King Flex, Tariq Nasheed for plugging me into the Mac Lessons Radio Show, man. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Dick riding. Dick riding is the annoying act of expressing that an artist can't go wrong. When an artist blatantly delivers subpar music and people will argue to death that it wasn't that bad, that is considered to be dick riding. And dick riders only have more respect than the police and snitches in the music game. As an AZ fan, I have a collection of albums, but for me to say that Undeniable was a good album, that would be me dick riding. When I listened to it, my disappointment almost made me give up being a fan because I felt he was falling off. But thankfully, he returned with gold, oil, and diamonds. And that keeps me anxiously anticipating Doa Die 2, in which it did come out. And it's all of you that believe Lil Wayne, the Carter 2, or the Carter 3, was greater than or equal to Lil Wayne, the Carter. You were awesome, Dick Rats. Same of you who believes that Jay Z Kingdom Come or Eminem Recovery or Eminem Relapse were good albums. Sure, they had some songs on there that I still listen to today, but by no means were the albums anywhere near the standard of quality that previous albums that they had have delivered. If you are on YouTube and you comment on a Lil Wayne freestyle saying how great he is, then you definitely are dick riders. Dick riders are not true to themselves. I'm not saying this to be hypocritical, but just because Eminem made a song does not make it hot. We all can admire a hit song, quit dick riding, and learn why songs are good and bad, and form your own fucking opinion. See, you type of people don't listen to any of the underground music scene because you let record labels control your mind. You let them control what music you listen to because all you listen to is the damn radio that they pay to push shit up on them. Grow up and become a man. Shit. Mike Jagger, the 11th album. Now this kid, Mike Jagger, is a pretty good lyricist. I'm not going to deny He is pretty good, but I did not like this whole 11th album mixtape, man. And reason being, I see what he was trying to do. Like, he got a whole lot of 90s samples. Like, samples from the 1990s, from Biggie to Escape to... He's giving props to the golden age of rap. In which I like that. That's cool. But yet, you can't let that interfere with you dropping some hot shit. Like, I mean, he does all of his own production. 
And with him sampling all of this stuff, it really just comes together all with, man. It's, it's not really very good at all. But you can tell by the way that he's rapping that he is confident in what he's saying. And his flow is a little different. And I fucks with that. But him being on that theme, it really took away from this mixtape. He's a much better writer than he is a producer. So I feel, man, you got to figure out what you're best at. And then take that and move on with it and leave what you're not that great at behind. I mean, I know it sucks. I know it hurts to do that type of shit. Like, me, I was a producer, rapper, writer, all of that shit. And I just left all that go so I could just focus on writing. And find a producer that's on your level with the writing and take off from there, man. You can't do it all. The game. Pulp and Patron. Now, the game got a lot of high songs up on this. This is, I mean, the game never really lets me down whenever he drops a mixtape. He always got a good little collection of songs. Like, on this, even though there's like 19, 20 songs, and I only like about three of them. And what's funny, he got a song on there where he's rhyming old school, sort of Slick Rick style. But yet, he sound like a dude from England. In which he's rhyming about a story, man, of him running from the police and buying some Chuck Taylors and all of that. It is actually a pretty good song. I, I really liked it just off of the fact that he could do that. That was pretty cool. But it should have made sense to me that he would be able to do that because his whole style is based on other people's style. And that's one of the main reasons why, as an artist, the game gives me fits. Because his punchlines always involve someone else, like he's capitalizing on other people's pain, struggle, or whatever in his punchlines. And I mean, it's unique, but yet it's unique for a reason. Like, you can't do that type of shit. Chase the pre- in which, speaking of the game, this guy basically is coming up through the game. I don't know exactly the relationship that he got with him, but I'm glad the game seen the talent in this dude, because he got some skills. Even though, I mean, I know the mixtape is called The Preview, and there's only nine tracks on it, and he's previewing something. I don't know what you're previewing me for, maybe you as an artist, but if you're gonna drop a mixtape with like nine tracks, you gotta already have something lined up in the future, like right next that you're promoting right now. You can't just leave me hanging on this, because out of these nine tracks, one of them is the games. So, X that off the list, so there's really eight tracks on the preview. And only two of them I like, but yet these two, I really like. I just wish there was so much more. I wish I would have got some more info from the dude, but but honestly, I'm keep my eyes out for him. I'm sure if he's running with the game, I'm sure he'll be dropping something else shortly, and I'll actually hear from it. It won't just disappear off the map. And that's the mixtape review for the 26th. Sorry for the delay, man. It's just I've been so busy working with this mixtape. And promotion and such like you heard at the very beginning of this that was my reaction to when I got my plug on that King Flex radio man and it's great man and if you don't watch if you don't listen to King Flex man please do uh, Tariq Nasheed his, his website is maclessonsradio.com like he teaches you how to go about dating game and get better at it and it's some really good stuff man I, I promise you you won't be disappointed remember Downloadpass.com mixtape is up, and if you don't want the if you don't want the full mixtape, man, just go to the website and comment on an article or something. And basically, by doing that, you'll be giving me your email, and I will send you the singles of the mixtape. There's three of them, I believe. There's three singles to this mixtape, and I'll send them straight to your email, and you can decide then if you want the rest of it or not. It's up to you. Said it couldn't be done though. 